It appears to me that most, if not all, of the royals are occultists. To continue to illustrate this point, I'm going to review the history and ownership of the Voynich Manuscript, which is a book about pharmacia, sorcery, and witchcraft. The Voynich Manuscript is an illustrated codex, handwritten in an unknown language by an unknown author, likely demonic fallen angel language. The pages are cow skin and they're dated to around 1404 to 1438 AD, probably during the Italian Renaissance. The text is written from left to right with illustrations of animals like Puff the Magic Dragon here, castles, which is likely where most of the Formicaean sorcery takes place, women doing what looks like sex magic rituals, plants like this mandrake here, which is a psychedelic and also has been grown at Oxford in the garden for over 400 years, astrological symbols, which are related to witchcraft and sacred geometry, like this cosmogram here, which looks like the Cosmati pavement at Westminster Abbey that's carved into the floor there. And I'm not going to go into too much of that book because it's a grimoire. Clearly, my main goal is to show who is interested in that sort of thing to prove my point about the royals being occultists and basically witches. I did read this book titled Rescued from the Kingdom of Darkness, written by an African tribal noble who was dedicated to Satan before he was born by his own family, but who is now saved by Jesus. I do believe this man's story because what he describes about his own situation mirrors exactly what I've been covering about the Western royal occultists on this channel. He describes the same practices that the Western royals implement, just from a different cultural perspective. Black and white magic, invoking and working for the fallen angels and demons, grooming and education by his family and other occult groups, specifically in Italy, a large amount of blood consumption, and a secret society that he was part of titled the Learned Elders of Zion, and so on. So just imagine similar practices on a much larger scale with the global elites versus the African kings. Both practice black magic and white magic and use similar some methods. And also, uh, you know, the Western royals, they collect witchcraft and occult practices and objects from different cultures, such as the Africans and the Native Americans. The city of London traded a land deed at Lake Havasu for a Hopi Kachina Nephilim doll because of its supposed powers. And Sir James Fraser wrote an entire book, The Golden Bough, with collections of witchcraft from all different cultures and time frames historically. And those are just a couple of examples. And the witchcraft does work. If you don't doubt that, you ask yourself why the entire world would willingly re restrict their own breathing, put themselves on probation, restrict their income, and poison themselves over something invisible they heard about on the lying news. And why almost everyone in the world believes that they live on a spinning ball hurling through space when their senses in the Bible clearly say otherwise. also want to mention that I do not believe we are in the little season and that Christ has already reigned on earth for a thousand years as an earthly king, I believe that we are in the birth pangs. I have investigated both the little season theory and biblical cosmology, and I've prayed about both, and I will not change my mind about either, and I will not debate other Christians about these topics. I won't try to convince you, and you don't need to try to convince me, because I've already considered those ideas, and I stand firm in my own personal conclusions. The main goal of this channel is to point out the witchcraft and sorcery and who is likely responsible for that because I also believe the Mark of the Beast and the Antichrist are imminent and these will be the people who participate in its implementation. So back to the witches who have clamored after the Voynich Manuscript. Since 16, or 1969, it's been hailed at the Yale University's Rare Book Library. But it was named for Wilfred Voynich, a Polish book dealer from a noble family who purchased it in 1912. Voynich was born of a Polish-Lithuanian noble family of a Polish heraldic clan. He was a licensed pharmacist. He moved to London in 1890. He became an antique book seller around 1897, acting on the advice of Richard Garnett, a curator at 
the British Museum, and he opened a bookshop in Soho Square in London in 1898. But prior to that, it was owned by this Rudolf II Holy Roman Emperor from the 1600s. Rome being the last beast empire in Daniel's interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's statue. And here is Rudolf II depicted with this pan-like creature on the left here of his portrait. And then up top you see this goat with a snake or marine snake tail at the top there. Very pagan depiction of Rudolf II. And here he is depicted as Vertumnus, a Roman god of seasons, and it says Rudolf greatly appreciated that work. This guy was an occultist who also owned the Devil's Bible, the Codex Gigas, which I covered in my video titled The Devil Wears Hermine. Rudolf was a devotee to astrology and alchemy, and his lifelong quest was to find the Philosopher's Stone. He brought alchemists Edward Kelly and John Dee into his court, performing experiments in his private alchemy laboratory. Rudolf gave Prague a mystical reputation that persists in part to this day with Alchemist Alley on the grounds of the Prague Castle being a popular visiting place and tourist attraction. And here he is, this painting of him. He was a Habsburg, which you can see from his jaw from the inbreeding. Then it was owned by Jacobus Herkiki, a Bohemian pharmacist and personal doctor of this Holy Roman Emperor, Rudolf II, and Jacobus was a Jesuit. Then it was owned by George Beresh, a Bohemian antique dealer and alchemist from Prague, a Jesuit. Then it was owned by Athanasius Kircher, German, Jesuit, scholar, and polymath who published 40 major works of comparative religion, geology, and medicine, a master of a hundred arts, including the supposed deciphering of hieroglyphics. The next one is Jean Marie Marcy, Fellowship of the Royal Society, personal doctor of Emperors Ferdinand III and Leopold I. In 1654, he was given a noble title, and the crater Marcy on the far side of the moon is named after him. The next one was per, uh, Peter Jan Beck, a Belgian Jesuit priest elected the 22nd Superior General of the Society of Jesus in 1853. The next is Ethel Voynich, spouse of Wilfred Voynich, who the book is named after. She was from Lancashire, England. The next was H.P. Krauss, an Austrian-born book dealer who specialized in medieval illuminated manuscripts, the most successful book dealer of the century, who bought collections and sold individual books from many different libraries of nobility with a special interest in Sir Francis Drake, the explorer and knight who I've covered before. And all of this is to say that these are the types of people who own such works of pharmacia and sorcery. And why would that be? Because they are studying and practicing witchcraft. The reason I cover this is because it works to some extent, on some people, and all of this leads up to the Mark of the Beast. I watched a recent interview with Whitney Webb where she talked about BlackRock's continued push for digital ID and digital currency, which she follows very closely, and she says will be the result of a soon war and economic collapse. I don't think she's someone who believes in Bible prophecy, but who does a lot of research on the political and economic side of things. To my way of thinking... This push does not appear to be the sole work of crooked businessmen and politicians who are doing this for personal gain and control. The root of it all is these people who communicate with the fallen. And I will link Whitney's short interview in the description box. Thanks for listening.